Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I have a quick demonstration to show you today. This is going to be a new feature of Star Exterminator. Star Exterminator obviously removes stars from images, and one of the cool benefits of doing that is it makes it easier to process comet data. Right now in the sky is Nishimura. It's a comet that's relatively bright, and so people are excited to process their images of it. Anytime a comet comes around, that's always kind of exciting. But uh, one of the cool methods of doing so is to remove stars from individual frames and then integrate the starless versions of the comet data. However, star removal algorithms like uh, Russ Croman Star Exterminator can sometimes remove stellar nuclei of the comet or even parts of the coma itself, especially if you're taking pictures of the comet as often happens in a wide field situation where the comet's coma and head is very small it looks kind of like a star, and some of that information ends up in the star layer. So this video is just going to demonstrate a new method. Um, star Exterminator has always honored masks, which you can uh, create that will allow you to say, Star Exterminator, do not do your job in this particular area. But now it's available in the batch mode, and that's what's key to being able to work with Comet data, where you want to use this particular method of removing all the stars of the in the individual frames and not affect the nucleus of the comet. So please join me and check out this cool new feature that advances one more incremental step uh, in being able to produce comet images with more ease. Trying to create a nice picture of a comet is always a challenge, and that's because comets move. So, one of the things that has happened through time is that there have been innovations with regards to processing comet data. It only comes slowly, though, these innovations, because there's kind of a cyclic nature of comets becoming available or exciting once every few years. Unlike other areas of image processing, these innovations, I think, occur more slowly just because of that. It's only when there's a bright comet in the sky, maybe something like Comet Leonard, or more recently, Comet ZTF, back in February of 2023, that once again, people get excited and want to process that data and learn about the very best techniques. In fact, when Russ Croman made this available, the moment he made it available, actually, I instantly recognized that, boy, it would be great if we could remove all stars from these comet frames and then do the job that's necessary. So the moment that he made it available, or not shortly afterwards, I asked, well, would it be possible to put a batch mode to use Star Exterminator in this batch mode to get rid of stars on a set of frames? One of the neat new features is to not only can we create these starless versions of the data and then integrate it together to create, of course, the color image of the comet, but one of the new features is to be able to choose to protect certain elements of an image. You know, Star Exterminator has always honored masks in general. If you had just a single image and you were going to remove all the stars from the image, you can apply a mask and protect certain regions. But as of today, a new feature, another nudge. I nudged uh, Russ Croman to do the batch processing. Another little nudge is to put that mask honoring feature in the batch process as well. And what that means is we can now protect any element of the nucleus of a comet here and make sure that when the star extraction, uh, star removal occurs, it's not removing parts of the comet if we don't want it to happen. So now let me show you some data. Now this data is in the middle of processing. So here is some comet data that is already aligned. Now, it still has the stars, but it is aligned on the comet. So let me just show you some data here. So here it is. Here's the data. There are stars. And if I blink this information, you'll see that the stars, of course, move, whereas the uh, comet just stays nice and stationary. So I'll just blink uh, some of the green frames here, star, green, star, like this. Because I was cycling, these are this is RGB data, because I was cycling between red, green, and blue, there's a significant amount of time between each, in this case, green data, green image. 
So if you blink here, you can see the comet doesn't move, but boy, there are big shifts in the stars, and that really helps just in general. But you might think that's a strange statement. I just told you that we're going to remove all the stars and then integrate the comet. Why would it matter if the stars have large motions? Aha, that is one thing I'm going to be showing you. And then very, very briefly, let me also mention that because of that, especially because of that time in February, there was a new release of some cool processes in PixInsight in February of 2023 or just before, uh, including the new comet alignment process. And then on top of that, of course, the batch processing that you can do with Star Exterminator made for a big deal when Comet ZTF uh, back in February of 2023 was in the sky. And at that time, I created a number of videos. I was one of the only content creators that I'm, I just went crazy about Comet stuff to be sure that I had every possible way that you might want to interact with Comet data. So I show all of the examples here, and these are still relevant today. There's another Comet in the sky right now. So I have a full one-shot color camera example, LRGB example, regular mono example, the traditional method if you just don't um, use Star Exterminator. Uh, it's a simple, simpler method, but maybe not quite as good depending upon the nature of uh, the number of frames that you have. So I have all of these examples here on my site, and if you want the uh, definitive guide at the moment for what to do to process Comet data, I think I have you covered. So back to PixInsight. Now what I'd like to do is show you the method by which you can do it. So here's the problem. Let's open up one of these green frames because the comet is brightest in green. And what I'm going to do is just very briefly run Star Exterminator, which I think I already have here, right? So, yeah, I'm going to generate the star image. Well, on screen, doesn't matter. And just run it here, and you can see what happens. Now, I've got the GPU business going on here, so it, you know, it flies through this pretty quickly. And the point is that if you look at the star's only frame, not only did it get the satellite trail, but it got part of the comet. You can see that part of the halo of the comet here and the nucleus. So now if we look over here, the nucleus is removed, part of the halo is removed. That's not good. That isn't what we want to have happen. Uh, by the way, I'll just undo this frame here. Yes, uh, my uh, exposure times are relatively long so that if you looked at uh, one of these frames, my comet was trailing, it was just moving so quickly, <laughs> uh, that I just decided that the comet was quite smooth, which meant that there wasn't any detail, and I just wanted to make sure that I could see as much of the tail as possible. And what that meant is that I just wanted to be sure that I was able to display as much of that information as I possibly could, which meant a little bit of trailing for me was okay. Uh, the benefit being that I would get the tail going all the way off the frame. That was the idea. So you can see what the problem is. Now let's uh, work on the solution. So the solution is we want to protect the comet. And protection means generating a mask before we go use our batch process here. I'm going to use the game script, which is the, you know, the script that everyone goes to here to generate uh, just a circular mask in this case is going to be perfectly fine. So there's our comet. We can zoom in here. We will add something like this. And uh, the point is that you're going to want to be relatively healthy about your mask. You're going to want to have a good margin between your mask and the, uh, you know, the comet itself. If you don't do that, then you'll find that you still end up with some part of the coma being removed. So I'm being healthy here. I might even be even healthier than this just to make it totally extreme that this method should work. But you will note that there are stars that are going to be captured in this region. If we're going to be protecting this, we're going to end up with stars, and I'll show that to you. So let's see. Now, I just generated the gradient mask. I actually think what would be better is to have the uh, binary mask of this thing, not the gradient mask. All right. And what we'll do to the mask is we will go ahead and go to convolution, just apply yeah, a little bit of a blur to it like that. And now we have our mask ready, but of course we need it to be in the sense that we desire it, 
We want it to be a protective mask, protecting meaning in this case, no uh, star removal in this area. And right now, this is only going to be removing stars in this area. So we need to make it the inverse. This is protecting with black and everything else is white. Now you can invert it here in um, Star Exterminator if you don't actually do what I did by changing the color. I just did Control I to invert the color is all I did. So now that I have this mask, and I will just call it uh, a comet mask like this, I'm going to put it down here and we will operate on those images. So I'm going to go to the batch process. We're going to say output starless files. Oh, by the way, we we don't need to now generate any star images unless you want to see them. We don't need to generate them. So anyway, we're going to go to output the starless frames to a particular place. I'm going to call this in the same directory. I'm just going to make a nested directory here and we will call this um, uh, Comet Let's just say starless. We know they're registered. And uh, this is where we could invert the mask. We're not going to do it. We're just going to select the mask. There it is, the comet mask. Uh, we're not worrying about unscreening any, we're not even saving any stars, so that's okay. We don't need to add any suffix suffixes here. And then I just need to tell it which files. Well, I'll operate on all of them here. For demonstration purposes, I'm just going to be showing you the green. But I'll, uh, maybe it will make a quick RGB just so you can see that it works. So here we go. Give it a moment. I'll be right back and we'll look at the frames that result. All right, it's done. So let's look at, let's use blank and actually look at the files that it created. Uh, we'll just look at one set of the files. So I'll look at the green data here. And this time when we flip through them, it's kind of an interesting thing to see. Let's zoom in here. You can see the protection. Look at that. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so it, we're getting the entire head of the comet and stars. But here's the thing that I mentioned. Here's the piece of information that I mentioned earlier, which is that the stars are moving, right? And they are not in the same place at all. Mm -hmm. Really super beneficial if you need to have this kind of protection. It's great if the stars are really shifting significantly from frame to frame because the last step here is to integrate these frames. Let's go ahead and do that. It looks kind of funny though, doesn't it? I think it looks kind of interesting. So I will get out image integration and we're going to choose not the full method here. In my videos, I explain how to do this with the full method, which is including normalization, local normalization and things like that. We're not gonna do that here. We're just gonna do a simple integration using some form of image rejection just as we normally do. So star green star, here are the green data. We don't have very many frames. Now, if you want maximum rejection, you could always, instead of doing average, you could just simply do the median. I don't recommend it, right? You want to average as many frames as you can. Weights, we're not going to care. Certainly with this few number of frames, we don't really care about the weights here. And let's just pick some kind of pixel rejection method I'm just going to choose Windsor Eye Sigma Clipping, and then we will change this to some very aggressive thing. Again, it's going to be like a median, but not quite a median. We'll still perhaps average uh, three or four, maybe five frames or something like that. That would be great. So at a particular pixel, right? Because we're going to be rejecting, hopefully, the stars. So we just change the Sigma High here, and that's it. This should do the job. We'll go ahead and hit the, the Do It button. If we look closely at the rejection high, you can literally see the stars being rejected in there, which is kind of cool. Here's the rejection low. And then finally, of course, here is the integrated image. Let me try to move that over here so we can check it out. Ta-da! And now we have the comet without any parts of the core being affected, which is perfect. This is an issue that some people have when especially when you have wide field images where the the centralized part of that comet really looks like a star, maybe even the entire coma plus nucleus looks very stellar-like uh, in wide field images. This is now the technique. This is a small increment forward, another advance in being able to process comet data 
and uh, getting the very best from it. So in SXT, we are able to use a mask in the batch process. Again, SXT always honored masks in general on any particular single frame, but now as part of the batch process, if you have lots of frames, you can do it on many frames just by generating a mask of any sort, any how you want, any way you want, and then uh, using it in the batch process. Why don't I go ahead and just do the final steps, which is I'll integrate the blue, let's clear these, just so you can see some kind of color thing emerges from here. So let's do star blue star like that, like this. I'm not going to even change anything. I'll just go ahead and generate it. Here we go. So this one is the blue. This one is the green. And I will generate the red. this, like that, press the button. Okay, we can see the stars again are rejected beautifully. It's exactly what we want. Now, you understand that in this example that I'm showing, it works relatively well. If there was some big bright star that you don't have enough motion between frames, you know, it's not going to be perfect. But this gives us this extra ability this extra flexibility to solve certain kinds of problems with regards to star removal that we just didn't have before and when we're trying to put together comet images. So I will make this red and then come to here for channel combination. We will throw our green to the green. We will throw our blue to the blue and our red to the red. Now, this has not yet been color calibrated. This is still at that stage where uh, color calibration will be necessary. So it's gonna look funky. First, we're gonna have all this kind of green. If we do an unlinked version of this, you can see that we get something, but it's very purple-like. There's lots of blue. It needs to have DBE done. All kinds of uh, you know, work still needs to be done. But of course, I showed you in the very beginning uh, the results can be very good, something like this. And you'll get a nice color of the comet and maybe other things in the background. Now, how you do that color calibration and many of the other steps, I will come back here as a last parting word and say that I really do go into all of that detail. Unfortunately, I just can't do that now. I want to show you this new feature of uh, star extermination that will solve a particular problem that people have had so far with using this technique, and now this kind of alleviates some of those issues. I hope you enjoyed watching this quick demonstration of a new way of using star removal in the batch mode by honoring a mask, and it could be that there are other uses that are outside of comet uh, processing, but today that is uh, one of the more common requests for wanting to uh, make that much, much improved. Thank you very much.